I'd like to illustrate one of the toughest ideas for new students of futures pricing, and that is the theory of normal backwardation. This theory tells us that the theoretical futures price, that's F sub zero, a price that is predicted or given to us by the cost of carry model, should be for most commodities less than the expected future spot price. I'm first assuming a consumption commodity with a spot price of $10. Spot price is denoted, of course, S sub zero, and it's the price we would pay or receive to exchange the commodity immediately, and generally it's going to be observable. I'm also assuming that the risk-free rate is 3% per annum, and the maturity on my futures or forward contract is one year. Also, because it's a storage uh, because it's a consumption commodity, probably it has a storage cost. I'm still following John Hole's notation, so I'll use a small u for that and assume just arbitrarily that the storage cost is 2%. And in this way, it's as a constant proportion of the spot price. You may recall that allows us access to the elegant version of the cost of carry model where everything is continuously compounded. Finally, I will assume that this is a high beta commodity, meaning it's beta with respect to the single common factor is 0.70, so pretty fairly high beta. And the single common factor is the market's excess return. So this is implicitly a capital asset pricing model based approach. I need an assumption for the overall market's expected return. I'm just going to say 12%. And that means that the expected excess market return, excess unless otherwise specified, tends to mean in excess of the risk-free rate. And it's meaningful because this is the single common factor in the capital asset pricing model. Because I assume 12% that expected excess market return is 9%. I then have some reconciliations here are some minor solutions that relate to the cost of carry model and the theory of normal backwardation, but I'm not going to get too bogged down in that here. You can download the spreadsheet if you like, because my focus here is on these two variables and the theory of normal backwardation. We know from experience that when new learners first see this, they tend to assume that the theoretical futures price is the same as the expected spot price, or at least some people understandably do. Notice though, I made a point here to really zoom in here and highlight the difference between the theoretical futures price and the expected future spot price. Now the theoretical futures price is given for us by the cost of carry model. And so in this situation, and I solve for that right here, the cost of carry model, again, briefly tells us that the theoretical futures price ought to be equal to the spot price, then grown at, in this case, continuously, the cost of carry. And the cost of carry depends on the factors that are relevant. In this case, with my consumption commodity, well, we always have a financing cost. That's small r, the risk-free rate. But in this case, we have a storage cost that's supposed to be a small u. Those are my two cost of carry factors. And I also have a maturity on the, uh, I need to grow that at the maturity of the contract. So that's the cost of carry model in this instance with borrowing cost and risk and storage cost giving returning for me the theoretical futures price of $10.51. You can see that right here. I'll bold this. And also I've drawn a solid line here to really emphasize the fact that this is these are observable prices, right? This is F sub zero, meaning it, it's a theoretical price that predicts what the traded price for the futures would be, but that's a price today, albeit it does represent a promise to buy or sell the commodity in the future. And I have a solid line here because this represents a segment here of 
the observed forward or futures curve. So, of course, the forward or futures curve would have several points on it, one for each maturity, one-month maturity, two-month maturity, six-month maturity, etc. Here just happens to be the one-year maturity. But my solid line is meant to emphasize the fact that these are predictions of observed futures prices that trade today. And here I have a situation that I expect, which is to say a futures price that's greater than the spot price, right? So we call this a contango. It's a technical term for contango. Contango is when the futures price is greater than the spot price. And we do uh, expect that here because the cost of carry exceeds any convenience yield. To keep it simple here, I've assumed zero convenience in holding the commodity. Okay, so that's the observed forward curve that happens here to be in its expected or natural state of contango because this forward price is greater than the spot price. And it's ten dollars and fifty-one cents. But the theory of nat, nat the theory of normal backwardation tells us that this we expect this price to be less than the expected future spot price. And so notice the notation here. The notation is especially meaningful. We have the expectation of the spot price in the future. And actually, although I entered it into Excel this way, specifically this value of $11.20 is really, notationally, this is expected S sub 1, the expected spot price in one year. And I did a dashed line here to emphasize that as opposed to the forward price, which is observed, this is really unobservable. As of today, we nobody could know what the spot price will be in one year. All we're doing is predicting it. And why is it $11.20? Well, because it's growing at, it's based on the expected growth rate of the commodity spot price. And in this case, my expected growth rate, you can see here, is the discount rate minus the storage cost. My discount rate is based on the capital asset pricing model. In this case, it happens to be my, well, my risk-free rate of 3% plus the beta of 0 0.7 times, that's the beta, that's the sensitivity with respect to the common factor, which is the market's excess return of 9%. So the application of the capital asset pricing model, given the beta and my other assumptions, tells us that the discount rate is 9.3%. However, it cost 2% to store the commodity. And so in order to right realize the discount rate of 9.3%, the commodity spot price needs to grow by 11.3%. Because we could think of the storage cost as a drag on that. A growth rate of 11.3% implies that an expected future spot price of $11.20. And so what we have is what is expected in the model of the theory of normal backwardation. We have a forward price that is less than the expected future sp spot price. In fact, we can be deliberate about their relationship, which I have put in a final row here, which is to say that the theoretical futures price is related to this expected future spot price, but multiplied is equal to, but multiplied by E raised to the risk-free rate minus the discount rate compounded at the maturity. So the key here in their relationship is in the exponent, it's risk-free rate 
minus the discount rate such that in if the beta if the commodity has any a non-zero or positive beta the discount rate will be greater than the risk-free rate and we get the normal backwardation wherein the forward price the theoretical futures price is less than the expected future spot price right this is why it's the natural situation because we expect the commodity beta to have a we expect the commodity to have a positive non-zero beta so we do expect k to be greater than r now what if it has a zero beta then i'll just put in a zero here notice in that situation with the zero beta then k does equal r and the although graphically my graph doesn't collapse the price is due and with zero beta k equals r and then the expected future spot price is equal to the theoretical futures price and this shows that the futures price is an unbiased estimate of the expected future spot price when the return on the commodity is uncorrelated with the common factor or with the overall market okay but that's only zero beta. I'll go back to 0.7. And then just finally highlight that theory of normal backwardation tells us to expect theoretical futures price less than expected future spot price. And what that means is that, yes, if you were entering a long position in the futures contract, you can see that implies that you are expecting a profit after all you're expecting to gain the difference here as the counterparty who enters the long contract that does mean you may have you may have anticipated this that whoever entered the counterparty who enters the short position in the futures contract is actually facing a loss so part of this theory is that the counterparties who are entering short positions, they are naturally hedgers. They are facing expected losses, which we can look at as they are a cost that they expect to pay as a cost of hedging or transferring risk to the counterparties on the other side of the trade who are taking long positions and they are speculators. So this theory has a narrative that supports it with saying speculators take long positions to hedgers who take the short positions and you can see here with this difference that speculators are expecting a profit and hedgers are expecting a loss so that's just the theory about the narrative but the key point remains that the we have a difference between these two variables I hope that's helpful. If you if the video is helpful, please subscribe to the channel and you'll be notified of updates.